What's gaming gamers? Today, I've got a Threadling build for you designed to completely and utterly destroy majors and bosses in almost any content in the game, as well as add clear incredibly effectively. This Warlock build is incredibly simple to use and has almost no nuance to it. It's as simple as using your abilities when they're off cooldown to get the most out of this build's potential. But before I get into the build itself, I'd first like to shout out our clan, the Tyrant Seraphs. If you're looking for people to play any content in Destiny with, ranging from ritual playlist and seasonal activities, all the way to raids and Grandmaster Strikes, feel free to join the Discord server. We welcome anyone, no matter how new or seasoned you are, and all of us will teach encounters if you don't know something. If you're interested, hop into the Discord server and play some Destiny with us. The link is in the description. Additionally, if you'd like to watch me play games more often, come hang out with me over on Twitch. I usually play whatever game I feel like over there, and I stream Destiny often. Furthermore, if you have any questions about builds or build crafting in general, I love answering those. If anything I've said has piqued your interest, the link to my Twitch is in the description as well. To get started with this build, I'll describe the exotic armor piece that you'll be taking advantage of, Swarmers. Swarmers are an exotic leg armor, and it has the very creatively named exotic perk, Swarmers. What Swarmers does is cause the destruction of any tangle to summon two Threadlings. However, in addition to these free Threadlings, Swarmers also causes all Threadlings you summon to unravel every target they damage. Swarmers causing your Threadlings to apply Unravel to targets is a fantastic utility for this build. All of the Strand debuffs are somewhat complex, so to keep this video a little bit simpler, I'll detail Unravel in an easier to understand way. Effectively, unraveling a target causes them to release threads every 1.2 seconds. These threads seek out nearby targets, and if there are no nearby targets, they will instead damage the already unraveled target. These threads deal damage to enemies they attack, as well as applying or refreshing the unraveled debuff to targets they hit. This makes Unravel a fantastic damaging debuff, and having every single Threadling you deploy apply the Unravel debuff allows them to do significantly more damage than they would otherwise. It also allows you to run a different aspect setup, but I'll detail that more specifically shortly. Now that you know what the Swarmer's exotic leg armor does, I can get into the build itself, starting with the subclasses setup. I'll first put everything on screen as a prescriptive setup if that's what you prefer, and once I've done that, I'll detail what each subclass element does, why I've chosen it, as well as any alternative options, should there be any. For the prescriptive subclass setup, run the Needlestorm Super, the Healing Rift, whichever jump you prefer, the Arcane Needle Melee, the Threadling Grenade, the Mindspun Invocation Aspect, the Weaver's Call Aspect, Thread of Continuity, Thread of Evolution, Thread of Rebirth, and Thread of Warding. To detail the subclass, firstly the Super. Needlestorm is the only option, but it's a really good super for burst damage on both bosses and groups of adds. Needlestorm throws a large storm of needles, which embed themselves into targets or the environment, dealing damage to enemies they've embedded into. After a short duration of being embedded, each of the needles will explode, dealing further damage to the enemy they've embedded into, as well as summoning Threadlings. The Threadlings summoned by the Needlestorm Super itself deal 41.5% extra damage, which is one of the reasons this super is great for ad clearing as well as boss damage. Needlestorm is a great super for dealing damage to bosses, and the larger the boss is, the more damage you'll deal, as the needles will be more likely to successfully attach to the boss and explode. Furthermore, if the boss is grounded, it'll take even more damage from the Threadlings summoned by the super. The Threadlings make Needlestorm a great ad clearing super as well. You can use the super on a large group of adds, and the explosions will deal with most of the group. Any stragglers not killed by the needles or the needle explosions will be cleaned up by the Threadlings. Onto the Rift, the Healing Rift is chosen as it's this build's main source of healing. During the cast animation of your Healing Rift, you're granted a 20% damage resistance to all incoming damage, making it safer to cast the Rift itself. While standing inside the Healing Rift, you'll be healed for 40 health per second, and if you're at full health, you'll be granted 3 health per second of an Overshield which caps at 15 health. This Overshield dissipates instantly upon leaving the Healing Rift, but is great for granting a small amount of extra health while within your Rift. You could run the Empowering Rift if you wanted, but that removes the main healing ability this build has, and I find that to be a deal breaker when thinking of running the Empowering Rift. However, in lower difficulty activities where you may not be taking much damage, Empowering Rift is an option should you choose to use it. For the melee ability, Arcane Needle is the only ability to choose, but it's a good melee. Arcane Needle has three charges by default, and upon damaging an enemy, will instantly unravel them, dealing additional damage to them. 
Furthermore, any enemy afflicted with a strand debuff will unwind into a tangle upon their death so long as your tangle is off cooldown, meaning Arcane Needle is a great source of effectively instantly generating a tangle. Tangles are quite useful for this build, as the Swarmer's exotic leg armor causes Threadlings to be summoned upon destroying a tangle. Thus, your tangle uptime is directly positively correlated to your Threadling uptime. This means having the Arcane Needle melee off cooldown to help you summon a tangle as often as you can is greatly beneficial to your Threadling uptime, and by extension, this builds efficacy. Onto the Grenade, the Threadling Grenade is chosen as it's the simplest form of instantly generating Threadlings. The Threadling Grenade, after having been thrown, will split into three projectiles, all three of which create a Threadling upon impacting an enemy or a surface. The Threadling Grenade instantly generating these three Threadlings are a great source of the Unravel debuff via the Swarmer's Exotic Leg Armor, a large burst of damage onto an individual target, or a helpful tool for a minor burst of ad clearing. As for the aspects, firstly, Mindspun Invocation will enhance your Strand Grenades. For the Threadling Grenade, Mindspun Invocation will allow you to consume the grenade, which will instantly generate five perched Threadlings. Perch Threadlings will unperch and seek out enemies you damage with your weapons or your melee, whether powered or unpowered. This effectively increases your Threadling generation potential from the Threadling Grenade itself by 67%, as you get five Threadlings from consuming the grenade instead of just three Threadlings from throwing the grenade. Mindspun Invocation can also open another avenue for this build, running the Grapple Grenade. With the Mindspun Indication aspect equipped, the Grapple Melee ability will summon three Threadlings upon damaging a target, which can be a great source of extra damage onto majors and bosses you've damaged with your Grapple Melee itself. This interaction will be mostly beneficial if you are running the Navigator Exotic Trace Rifle and doing the incredibly strong Grapple Melee spam setup, but I won't go over that in this video. Suffice it to say, if you prefer running the Grapple Grenade, having the Mindspun Invocation aspect equipped allows you to do so without significantly lowering your Threadling generation. The second aspect, Weaver's Call, will cause the casting of your Rift to generate three Threadlings, as well as instantly deploying all of your perched Threadlings. This is a fantastic aspect to use in combination with the Mindspun Invocation aspect and the Threadling Grenade. First, consume your Threadling Grenade to generate five perched Threadlings, then cast your Rift, which will then deploy a total of eight Threadlings instantly. Having this ability to instantly summon eight Threadlings is a fantastic source of very high burst damage and will be incredibly beneficial to your ability to deal with majors, champions, and bosses quickly. On to the Fragments, firstly, Thread of Continuity will increase the duration of all Strand debuffs you apply by 50%. This is very beneficial to your Unravel uptime and increases the total damage the Unravel debuff itself does, as well as increasing its potential to spread to other targets. The second fragment, Thread of Evolution, allows your Threadlings to travel further, travel around 33% faster than normal, and deal increased damage to enemies. Rank and file enemies and elites receive about 53% extra damage from Threadlings, and mini bosses and bosses receive around 33% increased damage from Threadlings. This is in addition to the extra damage the Threadlings already deal because of their application of the Unravel debuff. Thread of Evolution also comes with a plus 10 stat boost to your Intellect stat, which is a small boost to your Super's base recharge rate, but is otherwise negligible. Third for Fragments is Thread of Rebirth. Thread of Rebirth will grant your Strand Weapons the chance to summon Threadlings upon killing enemies. In reality, Thread of Rebirth causes your Strand Weapons to progress a hidden counter that, upon reaching 100%, will summon an amount of Threadlings correspondent to the enemy killed when the counter reached 100%. Rank and file enemies progress the counter by 34% and summon one Threadling. Elite enemies progress the counter by 67% and summon two Threadlings. And mini bosses and bosses progress the counter by 100% and summon three Threadlings. This means, in effect, you'll be summoning an extra Threadling or two every two or three kills, which noticeably increases your ad clearing potential. Lastly for Fragments, Thread of Warding will grant you the Woven Mail buff for 10 seconds upon the collection of any Orb of Power. Woven Mail is exceptional for survivability. While Woven Mail is active, you gain a 45% resistance to all incoming damage. This will remarkably increase your survivability so long as you're generating and collecting orbs of power, which this build will be doing often. As for alternative fragments, there is one you can use if you'd like, and that fragment is Thread of Generation. Thread of Generation will grant you grenade energy every time you deal damage to an enemy. This grants you grenade energy from all sources of damage you deal, including your weapons, abilities, and indeed Threadlings. This can and does significantly increase your grenade's uptime, and even though Thread of Generation was nerfed somewhat recently, it's still a great fragment for increasing your grenade's uptime. 
the more damage you deal, the more grenade energy you're granted, and this build will be dealing large amounts of damage consistently, making it a great candidate for use with Threat of Generation. I personally don't use Threat of Generation as I don't find I need it. The entirety of the armor setup is designed to refund as much grenade energy as possible, and weapon choices as well. As such, Threat of Generation isn't as necessary. If you want to use Threat of Generation, it does help noticeably with grenade energy, and may help to free up some armor mods if you'd like to run a slightly different mod setup. With the subclasses set up now detailed, I'll get into some artifact mods I recommend you use if you're watching this video during Season 23, The Season of the Wish. There aren't all too many mods that synergize especially well with Strand, but the ones that do are quite helpful for increasing the damage output and threadling uptime of this build. Firstly, for artifact mods, in the fourth column, there's the Unraveling Orbs mod. Unraveling Orbs grants all your Strand weapons the Unraveling Rounds buff for 7 seconds and is refreshable with no cooldown upon picking up further Orbs of Power. Unraveling Rounds grants your Strand weapons the ability to both pierce barrier shields as long as your weapon doesn't already have another anti-champion mod, as well as applying the Unravel debuff to enemies. As I've already explained what Unravel does to enemies, I won't describe it again, but the more enemies you debuff with Unravel, the more damage you'll be able to do to both individual targets as well as groups of adds. The second artifact mod to run, Dragon's Bite, is also in the fourth column. Dragon's Bite will grant your Strand weapons a chance to suspend enemies upon breaking their shields. The enemy doesn't have to have a Strand shield for this suspend effect to happen. You just need to break their shield with a Strand weapon for this suspend effect to have a chance to be applied. Wearing Season of the Wish armor causes this chance to be increased, but it's not worth specifically wearing Wish armor just for this mod. Having a free chance to suspend targets is a nice slight benefit for this build. As Dragon's Bite only procs upon the destruction of an enemy's shield, only enemies with shields will be suspended. That means this mod will only proc on majors and above, which are the enemies you'd want to be suspending anyways. This isn't a mod to rely on, as the percent chance feels small without any wish armor equipped, but when it does proc, it can be a significant help to you, so there's no reason not to run this mod. Lastly for artifact mods, in the fifth column, the Horde Shuttle mod will cause a Threadling to be summoned upon dealing enough damage to any unraveled target. There is a 0.5 second cooldown between summoning these Threadlings, and only weapon damage counts towards this mod. Any ability damage doesn't count towards the damage threshold to summon the Threadling. Furthermore, Horde Shuttle causes any target killed by the Unravel debuff itself to have a chance to summon a Threadling. Horde Shuttle simply increases your Threadling uptime, and by extension, your capability to apply the Unravel debuff. This has the effect of creating a positive feedback loop. Your Threadlings apply Unravel to enemies via the Swarmer Exotic Legs, and upon damaging those enemies with your weapons, you'll summon more Threadlings, which will then apply Unravel to more enemies, allowing you to summon more Threadlings. Horde Shuttle is great for ad clearing especially, but it also allows you to get a slight amount of free damage on bosses who are unraveled, as they'll be taking damage from your weapons which will summon Threadlings. With seasonal artifact mods now detailed, I can get into the armor's setup for this build, starting with my recommendations for stat distribution. In the top 3 stat grouping of Mobility, Resilience, and Recovery, spec into Resilience first, with Recovery second highest in priority, and ignore Mobility altogether. Resilience is always the most important stat to spec into, regardless of class and build, as it dictates your overall health, shields, and damage resistance. At Tier 10 Resilience, you have a significant 30% resistance to all incoming damage. That makes having a high resilience stat imperative to survivability, especially if you plan to use this build to push Legend or Master difficulty content. Recovery dictates the delay between having taken damage and the start of your health and shield regeneration, as well as the rate at which you regenerate both your health and shields. The higher your recovery stat is, the lower the regeneration delay is, and the higher your regeneration rate is. Furthermore, recovery is the Warlock's class stat, meaning recovery directly affects your Rift's recharge rate. Higher recovery stats correspond to faster Rift cooldowns, making recovery even more important than it would be on another class. Mobility is entirely unimportant for this build. All mobility does is dictate your initial jump height, as well as your walking, strafing, and crouching movement speed. As none of those are necessary for this build's effectiveness, mobility can be ignored altogether, and those points which you would have put into mobility can instead be used for more important stats. In the bottom 3 stat grouping of Discipline, Intellect, and Strength, spec into Discipline first, with Strength second, and Intellect third. Discipline governs the base recharge rate of your grenade ability, which will be imperative to your Threadling Grenade's uptime when you aren't able to regenerate it actively. The higher your Discipline stat is, the faster your grenade will recharge passively, but the Discipline stat itself doesn't affect any active grenade energy gains. 
All active energy gains are percentage based, which means discipline only affects the rate at which your grenade ability recharges on its own. Strength will dictate the base recharge rate of your melee ability, but similarly to Discipline, it doesn't affect any active energy gains whatsoever. As this build doesn't take any significant advantage of the melee ability, Strength is much less important than Discipline, but put a few points into it to ensure your melee ability doesn't have an absurdly long base cooldown. Intellect determines your super ability's passive recharge rate, but similarly to both Discipline and Strength, it doesn't affect any active super generation. Intellect is much more of a PvP stat than it is a PvE stat, with how easy orbs of power are to generate and collect, as well as the simple fact that active super generation is much more easy to accomplish in PvE, specking into intellect is almost always entirely unnecessary in PvE. However, try to keep your intellect stat at at least 30 points, as that will ensure your super's base cooldown isn't any longer than it was designed to be. My armor stats have me at 32 mobility, 90 resilience, 70 recovery, 90 discipline, 40 Intellect, and 60 Strength. With stat distribution now detailed, I'm getting into the armor's mod setup. I'll first put everything on screen as a prescriptive setup if that's what you prefer, and once I've done that, I'll detail the armor's mod setup, describing what each mod does, why I've chosen it, as well as any alternative options, should there be any. For the prescriptive armor mod setup, on your helmet, run one Harmonic Siphon mod and two Heavy Ammo Finder mods. On your arms, run one Focusing Strike mod, one Impact Induction mod, and one Grenade Kickstart mod. On your chest piece, simply run whichever resistance mods you need for the content you'll be running. On your legs, run one Absolution mod, one Innervation mod, and one Recuperation mod. Lastly, on your bond, run two Bomber mods and one Reaper mod. To describe the armor's mod setup, firstly, the helmet's mods. The Harmonic Siphon mod will cause rapid Strand Weapon final blows to summon a potent Orb of Power, which upon collection will grant you 2.5% Super Energy, a stack of Armor Charge, 9.38% Threadling Grenade Energy due to the Absolution and Innervation mods together, and 70 Health due to the Recuperation mod. The potency of the Orb only affects the amount of Super Energy you're granted. It doesn't change the amount of Ability Energy or Health granted by other Armor mods. Next, the two Heavy Ammo Finder mods together will summon a Brick of Heavy Ammo, which, upon collection, will grant you 60% of the amount of ammo a normal Heavy Ammo Brick would. For example, if you would have been granted 100 Machine Gun Bullets from a normal Heavy Ammo Brick, the Finder Brick summoned would instead grant you 60 Machine Gun Bullets. Scavenger mods in your legs do affect the amount of ammo granted by Finder Bricks, but the amount of ammo is dictated upon the spawning of the Brick, not the collection of it. In other words, you can't walk up to a brick and equip a scavenger mod to have it grant you more ammo. You have to have a scavenger mod equipped when the brick is summoned to be granted the extra ammo. Alternatively, if your armor doesn't have enough energy to run one siphon and two heavy finders, you can run two siphon mods and one heavy finder mod. This increases the amount of super energy you're granted by the siphon orb from 2.5% to 3.75%, which itself is a 50% increase to the amount of super energy granted per siphon orb. However, only running one Heavy Ammo Finder reduces the amount of ammo granted by the Finder Brick from 60% to 27.5%. This lowers the amount of Heavy Ammo you're granted per Brick by more than 50%, making the trade-off not worthwhile over running two Heavy Finder Bricks. Onto your Arms mods, firstly, the Focusing Strike mod will grant you 6% Rift Energy upon dealing damage with your Powered Melee ability on a 7 second cooldown. This means you can only be granted this Rift Energy once every 7 seconds. Focusing Strike is brought mostly as a passive bonus to your Rift's uptime, and as the Rift is this build's main source of healing, as well as a utility for instantly deploying perch Threadlings, having your Rift off cooldown more often is beneficial to this build's effectiveness. Next, the Impact Induction mod will grant you 7.5% Threadling Grenade Energy upon dealing damage with your powered melee attack on the same 7 second cooldown that affects the Focusing Strike mod. Having Impact Induction allows you to use your Powered Melee attack to actively regenerate both your Grenade Ability and your Rift every so often, and every bit of active Ability Regeneration is helpful for ensuring you can effectively spam your abilities in a loop. Lastly for Arms mods, the Grenade Kickstart mod will instantly refund you a maximum of 21.5% Threadling Grenade Energy upon the use of your Threadling Grenade, so long as you have 3 stacks of Armor Charge when you use it. Any less than 3 stacks of Armor Charge will result in less refunded Threadling Grenade energy, so do your best to ensure you have 3 stacks of Armor Charge when you do use your Threadling Grenade. For your Chest Pieces mods, you don't really need anything specific here, and can instead run whichever resistance mods you need for the content you'll be running. If the activity I'll be playing has a Threat Modifier, I'll run 2 resistance mods that correspond to that activity's Threat Modifier, and a 3rd resistance mod of a separate affinity. If the activity doesn't have a Threat Modifier, I usually just run one Arc, Solar, and Void Resistance mod each. 
Onto your legs mods, firstly, the Absolution mod itself will grant you a base 5% ability energy to all three of your abilities upon the collection of an orb of power with no cooldown. This 5% figure is affected by ability tiers, but not before other mods are applied to the figure itself. To describe what I mean by that, I have to move on to the next mod, Innervation. Innervation will grant you 10% grenade ability energy at base upon the collection of an orb of power with no cooldown. This 10% figure is additive to Absolution's 5% figure, meaning both mods together will grant you a base 15% grenade ability energy upon the collection of an orb of power. Once ability tiers are factored in, both mods together only grant you 9.38% grenade ability energy, but that's more energy than you'd get with two Absolutions or two Innervation mods together, so it's very worthwhile to run one of both an Absolution mod and an Innervation mod. Lastly for your legs, the Recuperation mod will grant you 70 health upon the collection of any orb of power with no cooldown. This makes collecting orbs of power inherently safer, as well as allowing orbs of power to act as effective healing wells while in combat. As Strand Warlocks don't have any intrinsic healing capabilities outside of the Healing Rift, having Recuperation is a significant benefit to your survivability, especially when solo or pushing higher difficulty content. Onto your Bonds mods, firstly, the two Bomber mods together will grant you 12% Threadling Grenade energy upon the casting of your Rift. This is a significant increase to your Threadling Grenade's uptime, and as most casts of your Rift will occur just after having consumed your Threadling Grenade, you'll be granted this 12% Threadling Grenade energy almost every time you cast your Rift. Lastly, the Reaper mod will cause your next weapon final blow after having cast your Rift to summon an Orb of Power. This Orb of Power will grant you 0.8% Super Energy, as well as all of the Ability Energy, Health, and Armor Charge granted by other Armor mods. This is simply a passive boost to your Orb of Power generation capabilities, and as generating Orbs of Power is greatly beneficial to this build's effectiveness, having more Orb generation is a major boon for this build. With the Armor's mod setup now entirely detailed, I can get into some weapons and weapon perk combinations I recommend for use with this build. I'll first go over weapons in the Kinetic slot, then the Energy slot, and then the Heavy slot. Once I've done that, I'll go over a few exotic weapons you could use with this build. In the Kinetic slot, I recommend running a Strand Primary Ammo weapon in this slot, as that will synergize the most with the build itself as far as Fragments, Artifact mods, and Armor mods go, as well as having infinite ammo. As for specific Strand Primary Ammo weapons I recommend you use, there are the Immortal Strand Submachine Gun from the Trials of Osiris loot pool, with the perk combination of Demolitionist and Threat Detector, the Old Sterling Strand Auto Rifle from the World Drop loot pool with the perk combination of Demolitionist and Rewind Rounds, the Relentless Strand Pulse Rifle from the Prophecy Dungeon with the perk combination of Hatchling and Outlaw, and the Rufus's Fury Strand Auto Rifle from the Root of Nightmares Raid with the perk combination of Demolitionist and Paracausal Affinity. In the Energy slot, I recommend running a Special Ammo weapon in this slot as it'll help you to deal with Majors, Champions, and Mini-Bosses effectively, as well as allowing you to deal some extra damage to bosses if your heavy weapon runs out of ammo. As for specific energy slot weapons I recommend you use, there are the Epicurean Void Fusion Rifle from the Duality Dungeon with the perk combination of Backup Plan and Quick Draw, the Forbearance Arc Waveframe Grenade Launcher from the Vow of the Disciple Raid with the perk combination of Ambitious Assassin and Chain Reaction, the Indebted Kindness Arc Rocket Assisted Sidearm from the Warlord's Ruin Dungeon with the perk combination of Beacon Rounds and Volt Shot, and the Techian Force Arc Fusion Rifle from the Last Wish Raid with the perk combination of Controlled Burst and Envious Assassin. As a quick aside, as of the writing of this script, the Forbearance Grenade Launcher is only available from the Vow of the Disciple Raid. However, in the coming weeks, it will be available from the Onslaught activity, and that version of Forbearance would be better for this build. If you're watching this video after the Into the Light Forbearance has been released, farm for that Forbearance with the role of Demolitionist and Chain Reaction. That will grant you both grenade energy and melee energy every kill you get with the weapon due to Demolitionist and the weapon's origin trait, Indomitability. For heavy weapons, you can genuinely run whatever weapon you want. Machine guns and grenade launchers will be good for clearing adds, and rocket launchers and linear fusions will be good for boss damage. As such, run whatever weapon you feel you need for the activity you'll be playing. As for specific heavy slot weapons I recommend, there are the Apex Predator Solar Rocket Launcher from the Last Wish Raid, with the perk combination of Bait and Switch and Reconstruction, the Dragon Colt Sickle Strand Caster Frame Sword from the Warlord's Ruin Dungeon with the perk combination of Demolitionist and Hatchling, the Edge Transit Void Grenade Launcher from the Into the Light loot pool with the perk combination of Envious Assassin and Frenzy, and the Mercado 45 Strand Machine Gun from the World Drop Weapon Pool with the perk combination of Demolitionist and Hatchling. Onto exotic weapons I recommend using with this build, there are a few in the energy and heavy slot that would slot well into this build. 
I would personally recommend against running an exotic kinetic weapon, as none of the strand weapons would fit well with this build in particular, but if you'd like to run them, you can try them out and see if they suit your playstyle. As for exotic energy weapons I recommend using, there are the Buried Bloodline Void Sidearm from the Warlord's Ruined Dungeon, and the Dead Messenger Grenade Launcher from the Vox Obscura Exotic Mission. Exotic heavy weapon recommendations are more plentiful for this build. There are the Dragon's Breath Solar Rocket Launcher from the Season of the Wish, the 1000 Voices Solar Fusion Rifle from the Last Wish Raid, the Parasite Solar Grenade Launcher from the Witch Queen Expansion, and the Thunderlord Arc Machine Gun purchasable from the Monument to Lost Lights in the Tower. Any one of the exotic weapons I've just mentioned will suit this build nicely, so use all of them and see which one you enjoy using the most with this build. With the entire build now detailed, I can get into some playstyle tips and tricks I have for use with this build. The biggest thing is to ensure you have as many Threadlings active at a time, as well as ensuring you're unraveling as many targets as you can, because damaging them will generate more Threadlings thanks to this season's artifact. Accomplish this by consuming or throwing your grenade, deploying your rift, getting critical kills with your hatchling weapons, and getting kills with your strand weapons. Stay alive by collecting orbs of power and using your healing rift, Generate Threadling Grenade Energy by collecting Orbs of Power and getting kills with your Demolitionist weapons, and most importantly, have fun! And that's all for this video, thank you so much for watching! If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more content like this, liking the video, leaving a comment, or even subscribing all help me out a ton. Sharing it with a friend whom you think might enjoy it is also helpful, so if you know any Warlocks who enjoy Strand, send them this guide. Other than that, if you'd like to join our clan, the Tyrant Seraphs, the link to the Discord server is in the description below. Additionally, if you'd like to watch me stream some games sometime, come hang out with me over on Twitch. The link for that is also in the description. Lastly, if you have any questions or constructive criticisms, leave them in the comments. I read all of them and reply to all that I can. Thank you again for watching, and have a great day!